I have a problem. I have plants. Or at least it's a problem when we go on vacation. Because plants need water and I'm not there to give them any. So usually we do what I think most people would do and ask our friends to come around and do it for us. But I don't like that solution. I don't want people to do it for me. I want something to do it for me. Yeah. So last time we went on vacation, I actually made a prototype of an automated plant watering system that I could control over the phone. And as you can see here, it worked out pretty nice. But there is just one problem. It's still a prototype, so it's not really meant for being used. And I want to change that. I want to make this prototype into a final nice product that's easy to set up and easy to put away. And that's what we're doing today. So let's get going. So here's a quick rundown of the plan. The system will be built around a fairly large plastic container that'll hold the water. I'll place the pumps in the container and then run tubes up through the lid and straight to the plants. On top of the lid there'll be a little box with all the electronics and that's basically the brain of the system. From here I'll run a wire to a soil moisture sensor on every plant so we can see how well they're doing. The sensor will also hold the tube and I think that's a really neat solution. Of course, the pumps will also be connected to the control box. All in all, this system can support up to four plants, and I think that'll do for now. These are all the components we're going to need to make the watering system. The first one is this. It's an ESP8266. It's a microcontroller and it is very suited for internet control projects because it has a built-in Wi-Fi module. Connected to this, we're going to have four capacitive soil moisture sensors. And um, these are all analog. But this creates a slight problem because the ESP8266 only have one analog input. So to overcome this, we have an analog to digital converter which connects to the ESP via I2C and it enables us to have four additional analog inputs. Lastly, we're going to connect the pumps and uh, to connect them, we are using a four channel relay module. Now let's have a look at the 3D printed parts and let's start by examining the case. There are some mounting points inside, but it also has got some holes in the sides. And um, what are these for? Well, to be able to connect both the sensors and also the pumps, I'm going to be using some JST connectors. To fit those in the case, I have printed these special parts here in a very fine resolution, hopefully to get a very good fit with the connectors. Also, we have a lid for the case. And uh, as you can see, it's going to be called the Plant Keeper. And I think that's a nice name for this system. To achieve this effect here, I just extruded the text one millimeter above the surface of the lid. And that makes it very easy to color in using a black marker. Lastly, we're going to need a case for the sensors. And I've tried to design this in a very simple manner. This is one half, which should accommodate the sensor and it should lock in place with these small indents here in the sides. And to finish everything off, I have a lid that just slides in over the sensor and locks everything firmly in place.
here it is. And isn't it just beautiful? I think it turned out even better than what I was hoping for. As you can see, all the tubes and sensors are neatly packed away inside. So this is basically how I'll be storing it when it's not in use. But speaking of use, it's not really an automated watering system just yet. Far from, this is just the hardware. So now we have come to the most important part, which is writing the clever code that makes everything work. And personally, I think that is the best part. So let's get to it. For this project, I decided on using Blink, which is an Internet of Things platform that's quite well made and easy to use. And it's free for personal use, or at least until you run out of energy, which is the in-app currency for purchasing modules for your user interface. But honestly, I think it's a fair bargain for an otherwise free app and server solution that just works. So I wanted the system to have three different watering modes. A manual mode, a timer mode, and an auto mode. And let's focus on that, because in the auto mode, the system should water the plants if the soil moisture drops below a set threshold. And this mode is really what makes this system fully automated. But out of the box, the sensors don't give me the soil moisture value in a usable format. All I get is a voltage ranging roughly from around 1.5 to 2.8 volts. And to make the system more intuitive to use, I want this value as a percentage. So we'll need to do some conversion. And I looked around the internet and found a pretty simple approach. First, I measured the voltage when the sensor was just exposed to air. I then immersed the sensor in water and took another reading. Then I mapped these two extremes onto a range from 0 to 100%, which should work. This method assumes that the sensor is linear, which it probably isn't, but to be fair, I think it's all right for my purposes. And since no cheap sensor is made equal, I repeated the experiment for all four sensors, and now they exhibit a pretty consistent and identical behavior. I want to be able to set a different mode for each of the four plants. And depending on the mode, I want to be able to control the interval between waterings, the minimum soil moisture threshold, and of course the amount of water to be discharged. And this all seems pretty straightforward, but actually we run into a small problem, because we need to figure out for how long the pump should be turned on to get out a specific amount of water. To state the obvious, the longer you turn on the pump, the more water you get. But there is another factor, and that is the tube, because the tube has to fill up before any water comes out. And it's pretty important to compensate for that, especially when dealing with small amounts of water, because here the error can get pretty large. So it all comes down to a pretty simple linear equation, which says that the duration you need to turn on the pump equals the amount of water you want times some flow factor plus a tube constant that compensates for the tube that needs to fill up. Through some trial and error, I estimated these values for each of the pumps. And this method seems to consistently be within a few milliliters for both small and large values. And that's definitely good enough for me. If you look closely, there is a last setting that we can control in the bottom, and that's a minimum interval between waterings in auto mode. Well, everything can fail, and I really don't want the system to empty a whole tank of water onto a single plant that it thinks is too dry. Because if a sensor were to be placed so that it had poor contact with the soil, it could result in bad readings, 
and in a worst case scenario, that could trigger the system indefinitely. So to protect our house from a potential water damage, this setting basically makes the system wait at least a set period of time before it's allowed to pour more water. Nice. Now that's enough talk, let's see the final result. So there you have it, my slightly over-engineered solution to keep the plants alive when we're on vacation. But boy I love how everything turned out. Of course, given the current situation, my life is not full of holiday plants at the moment. But hopefully this system will have its debut next summer. I surely hope so. If you would like to build a similar system to this, I have uploaded the STL files, the Arduino sketch and a QR code to my Blink setup that you could have a look at. Bear in mind, this is not a complete tutorial, but feel free to use whatever you can. On a different note, the channel has grown a lot lately. Just a month ago, there were only about 500 subscribers, and now we have reached over three and a half thousand, which is amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to have you here. And if you by any chance haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.